Hello everyone, welcome to the video. In this video, we'll be talking about writing web applications in F Sharp. So this is actually one of the strengths of F Sharp. The community has been like really creative to write great open source libraries to write full stack web applications with F Sharp. And we'll walk through every detail of these libraries and how to leverage them. And with these libraries, we can write really performant end-to-end -end web applications from the CI to the front end, to the back end, to the deployment, all with F Sharp. And that's basically the motto of the language. It's one language to rule them all, write it, learn one language, write it everywhere. And so we're, I'm really excited to share this with you. Now, there are different web frameworks and libraries to use to write web applications with F Sharp, but I'm only going to be talking about the way I recommended the most, which is the safe stack. Uh, there, there's also other ways to write some. That apparently, Web Sharper is a good way to write it. I, I looked into it a little bit. It seemed interesting, but by far, I believe the best way to write web applications with F Sharp is the safe stack. So what is the safe stack? Well, let's go, it's an acronym, basically like just like the mean stack or the lamp stack. Uh, the safe stack is an acronym consisting of Saturn, Azure, Fable, and Elmish. And so let's break down what each of these means, but keep in mind, even though it's an acronym with these words, it is not limited to these uh, libraries and frameworks. We can customize the stack to our needs and wants. So that's thing to keep one thing to keep in mind. Also, one thing to keep in mind is that the, the wording "safe" is much like a play on words. That like F sharp, one of the main selling points is its safety, its type safety, its strong typing. So "safe" is kind of a ha ha kind of acronym. So that's cool. Now, what are each of these components? So basically, we're gonna have a choice of infrastructure. Uh, a choice of back end, a choice of front end, and basically two of those letters are, are basically the uh, front end technologies. And so why, why the safe stack? What, what should we select? What, we're, what are we looking for in a web stack actually? So each of these will be selected based on what you need for your service or application. And so if we walk down each of those, so let's start with inf infrastructure. What, what, what's your user load? How many, how many users or requests will you need? Will you need scalability? Will you need, uh, will you need on-premises stuff? Will you need, uh, do you need everything to be in the cloud because you have no infrastructure at home? Those are all questions to select what infrastructure you want or what kind of database you want as well. That's another question. For backend, do you want to use something like Azure Functions serverless? Or do you want to use something more Docker-based? Or what? Well, these questions will be important to answer what backend framework you're going to use. Uh, another factor is just preference, like based on the frameworks that are available, uh, which one you prefer. There's some advantages and disadvantages. Some you can argue are just straight out better than others. So that's one thing we're going to talk about. Um, and as for the front end, well, then do you want to leverage the JavaScript ecosystem? Ecosystem. Or do you want to work on WebAssembly and leverage newer emerging technologies if you're feeling a bit the air experimental? Uh, and more into depth in the front end, do you like an MVU pattern, like a model view update architecture? Or do you want to work more in the React kind of uh, paradigm? So these are questions you're going to have to answer for yourself. And these will basically dictate which, which technologies you're going to use. Obviously the use cases and what you need is going to be uh, primordial, but like front end, like React versus MVU, what's gonna dictate what you're gonna pick is what, what you value, basically. The value MVU is like better testability, but React components can, you can argue, there's more information out there, uh, it might be more fun to work with, I don't know, it depends, it depends. So now that, we have, now that we have a quick overview of each of those acronyms and what they represent, now we need to talk about more in depth of, you know, what decisions we want to make, like for the infrastructure. Uh, now we, we probably decided, you know, do we need cloud or not? So that's one decision. If you're not going to use cloud, maybe where are you going to be deploying? Are you going to be deploying on a, a normal Windows server? Are you going to be deploying on a Raspberry Pi? 
do you want to use Docker? These are questions you need to be answered. And uh, so, yeah, and these, these choices will influence, influence your choice of backend because let's say, for example, you want to use Azure Functions, then you're not going to be using a, the same type of backend that you normally would because normal uh, server libraries and frameworks, they do the API routing and stuff for you or you need to do it in, in those libraries. So the, the Azure functions, a lot of that is handled by the serverless kind of software uh, in, in Azure. So these are different concerns. They, they influence the choice of technology. And so that's gonna play a role. Uh, for the backend projects, or what, what, what can you use for, let's say, a REST API or a backend server? So, in order, not in order of what I believe is best, but in order of, you'll see, basically. I'll start by explaining ASP.NET Core. So, ASP.NET has been the most used way of doing web applications in C Sharp for many years on .NET, basically, or, or F Sharp as well. And uh, now with .NET Core, there's ASP.NET Core, so that's still very used. It's a good library, but it's very non-idiomatic to, uh, to F Sharp. And so many people have written libraries on top of ASP.NET Core. So all of these libraries I'm about to list are fundamentally based on ASP.NET Core. They just have a functional wrapper over them. So the first one would be Giraffe. So Giraffe has been probably the most stable uh, F sharp web uh, library or backend library uh, that you can use on F sharp. It's been it's not one of the first, obviously, but it's uh, you know it's been there quite a while. It's a thin wrapper over Giraffe, so basically, uh, sorry, it's a thin wrapper over ASP.NET Core, and it makes things more functional. So it's it's more idiomatic to what you would do in uh, in F sharp. So. Basically, you don't have any controllers, like per se, like an MVC world, which is more object oriented, if you really think about it. Like you don't have this controller class. You could just have uh, functions that handle your, your web requests. But everything you can use with SP.NET Core, like the middleware, all this stuff can be reused with uh, Giraffe. So that's pretty cool. And uh, Giraffe uses uh, kind of some cool stuff from other libraries. Like for example, there's, there, there is this library called Suave for uh, F-sharp backends. Uh, it's kind of getting pretty old now, but uh, one thing that was really cool with Suave is how you would route your web requests using like a Clasely operator, I believe it's called. Uh, just makes it very easy to understand what your API is, what the routes are. And uh, so that's one thing that's been uh, integrated into Draft, so that's pretty cool. And so it's a pretty solid choice. You can also do some server-side rendering with Draft, so that's, that's also very important. It's, it has its own, its own view engine. And uh, yeah, so the next one I'm gonna talk about is Saturn. So Saturn, I've, I briefly mentioned it, mentioned it in my computation expressions video, but Saturn is a wrapper over Giraffe. So Giraffe is a wrapper over ASP.NET Core and Saturn sits over Giraffe and basically offers some neat computation expressions and other tools uh, to integrate with Giraffe and make it more, uh, like, a, it's a, more like a DSL wrapper over it, I, I should say. Like, uh, makes things a bit simpler. It's very opinionated. So kind of giraffe is not very opinionated, opinionated at all. Uh, Saturn can be more opinionated if you let it. Uh, there's also a lot of extra stuff, but so I, I usually either use giraffe or Saturn. I've been working with Saturn a little bit. I've been uh, enjoying it. I don't really use all the opinionated stuff. So I just use what I want to use and that's cool. That's, you can use a lot of things or not. And uh, yeah, there's uh, other libraries. Um, there's one called Falco, which is pretty recent. Uh, I've looked into it a little bit. It seems to be, uh, it's also sitting on top of ASP.NET Core. It seems to uh, try to simplify things a little bit and add some uh, like security features and authorization stuff, authentication. I haven't used it. I uh, haven't looked into it too much, so I can't really comment on if it's uh, good or not, uh, there seems to be a bit of traction with it, so that's pretty interesting. And yeah, so a lot of this comes to personal preference, just looking into each of these and picking the one you want, to be honest. Uh, there's some trade-offs like more opinionated, less opinionated, like that usually means that more of a library versus more of a framework. So that's one thing you're gonna have to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, so there's not really a winner here and I don't wanna really pick a winner, I wanna let you figure it out. 
Um, you can start with a, just start with one and pick another and see what everything, uh, how everything is. But I usually stick with uh, Saturn for these days, so that's one thing to keep in mind. There's also one called uh, Freya, but I haven't really worked on it and it's pretty old. So uh, yeah, old stuff, yuck. Now, as for the front end, so there's going to be more decision here in the front end. Uh, you basically start with two main paths. So there's the JavaScript path and the uh, WebAssembly path. So in the JavaScript path, you're not going to actually be writing JavaScript, but you're going to be leveraging a F sharp to JavaScript transpiler called Fable. So Fable, you see what it does? It takes your F sharp code and transpiles it to JavaScript so you can write HTML, JavaScript, web applications with F sharp. So that's in itself is pretty really like it's a really, really amazing tool. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this one before I go to Bolero. Not only can you, not only is there a, a transpiler for JavaScript, but we have a whole library called fable.react. And that enables us to write React components and use the React virtual DOM for our web applications. So that means all the greatness of JavaScript that has been emerging in the past few years, we can all leverage that in F-sharp and write type safe code and share code between the front end and the back end in order to write cool applications. So that's like a massive win. And that's why one of the reasons it's the most overlooked thing uh, from, I guess, from other people looking at F-sharp, even though there's now there's other languages that do this kind of transpiling pattern and, and compiling to JavaScript, uh, F-sharp and Fable is really, really good. It really cranks out the content that you can put out. And so before I go more into that JavaScript round, I'm going to step back and talk about Bolero. So Bolero, Bolero is a, uh, a wrapper around Blazor. So basically Blazor is the implementation of C-sharp or .NET to run uh, .NET code into the browser via WebAssembly. So WebAssembly is a newer technology to uh, run native code in the browser and compile it there. So it's basically trying to replace JavaScript. I don't really know much about it, so I can't, can't say much about it. I can't pretend to be an expert and I haven't tried, haven't really exper experimented to comment, but uh, probably in a lot of years, it's gonna be a, 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 a very important way of writing web applications. But for now, I'm just going to leverage by, uh, Fable, to be honest. But maybe, you never know, maybe experiment a little bit with it, but for now, no. You can always do it, uh, you can always try it and let me know how you like it. That's also a, one thing you can do. Um, so yeah, those are basically the two paths there. And to go back on the, the JavaScript realm, you can, so most people leverage Fable React, right? They, they don't really write Fable apps, just only Fable. Most people, I would argue, write Fable.React apps. And then there's two more branches you can take from there on Fable React. You can either go into the model view update path, or you can go more into the uh, stick to React path and, and more on that. So in the stick to React path, there's a good library called uh, Feliz, I mean, like Feliz, like happy in Spanish. And uh, it's been, a, it's pretty cool. Like you can write more React looking code uh, in F-sharp and have all the React goodness and uh, stuff built in. And uh, I don't have much more to say about it. I want to use it uh, more and learn more about it because it's something that, that, that looks cool. And, you know, if, if, if you're someone trying to adopt F-sharp into your organization or, or your own projects, then it can be a, a much easier sell than like, hey, we're basically writing React, but it's a lot more type safe. So, you know, why, why not give it a try? Uh, so that's one thing. The other pack is the MVU, which is model view update. And model view update is a design pattern to basically architect and make UIs. So maybe if you know model view controller or model view presenter or model view view model. MVU, the, the goal is you have a model, which is data. You have a view function which takes data and renders a view. And that you can also have a dispatching function. So basically, if there's messages or something changes, you click a button, you can say, hey, button clicked. And then that's, so that's a message. So you're dispatching a message. And then you have an update function, which takes a message, takes your state and returns a new state and possible other messages or commands. 
And so it's, I'm not gonna go too much into depth in this, but it's a design pattern, very popular in uh, functional languages. And it's very interesting. If you don't know anything about it, it's very something you should, should check out. And um, yeah, so that's basically an Elmish path. So Elmish is something that resembles Elm. Elm is a functional programming language to write uh, MVU apps, but Elm-ish is, you know, like the goal, uh, like the name says, it tries to emulate Elm in F sharp. And lastly, for styling, because, you know, CSS is important for web apps or, or uh, styling your apps in general. Normally, you can use whatever you want. You can use Bootstrap or whatever, but in the community, what's been, what's, what has been used a lot is Bulma. So Bulma is a CSS framework based on the Flexbox. It's really easy to use. Uh, I've, I used it for like my website, for example. And uh, yeah, there's two ways you can integrate Bulma. They, in each of the past, like if you use Felice or you use uh, Elmish, there's bindings for, for both of these. So basically Fulma is the way you would use Bulma for Elmish and Felice has its own Felice Bulma. And so you can leverage this CSS framework to make responsive and really nice web applications with F sharp and it's type safe. All of these are type safe. So it's really, really fun to use. So these are a lot of choices. If you don't know anything about uh, why to pick each one of them or not, uh, it's going to be a lot of information, but yeah, that's a, it's a lot of stuff. So why pick what I kind of already went over why you would pick any decision. And at the end of the day, a lot of this is going to be personal preference, but the safe stack itself. So it's Saturn, Azure, Fable and Elmish, so that's kind of the basic cook cutter. Use Saturn for your back end, uh, use Fable and Elmish for your front end, and um, use Azure for uh, hosting and your database service and stuff like that. But you can use whatever services or cloud provider you want, or you can use whatever back end you want, or you can use whatever front end you want. At the end of the day, the goal is write good applications and ideally with F Sharp because it's a great language and you can have a lot of tools at your disposal. So this is basically an overview of, of everything in the safe stack world. Uh, it's a lot of fun to write apps. You'll see if you've like whatever you've been using before, if it's straight HTML or if it's razor views or if it's whatever. I mean, this is probably hands down the best programming experience you're going to ever have. Bolt statement, obviously, and I'm quite biased because I'm a F sharp fanboy, but uh, yeah. I, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. That's basically what I'm gonna talk about today. Um, next video is gonna be really cool. We're gonna talk about a cool project we're gonna work on end to end. And uh, so I'll, I'll talk more about it in that video. But uh, if you enjoyed this video, maybe leave a like, maybe leave a comment, uh, helps the algorithm out and uh, subscribe for more videos, which will be very cool. You'll see in the next one. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.